what you're looking at, I've done it before using just exactly this model that you're looking at right now, which I did in MS Paint several years ago. And I, I made a proper model for her on Illustrator. Granted, I've changed a lot of the style, the general style decisions I made since I stopped using Illustrator and started working exclusively in Moho. But I thought since I noticed there are a lot of people talking about how they have a difficult time drawing in Moho, I thought starting from this as opposed to one of my generics would actually be a good way to demonstrate how easy it can actually be to work it to work and to just draw in moho Let's see a few years ago before I started working with illustrator and later moho I really did not have a lot of confidence in my drawing I just tried doing something with, I'd actually tried doing my last project as a comic book and I just wasn't meeting any of the speed or quality standards that were needed to do such a thing. So I wound up just deciding that, okay, maybe art wasn't for me, wasn't something I could do. And as a result, I'm going to show you some things I'm not necessarily proud of. As a, It has nothing to do with how oh, there are a lot of sexy pictures in here. But basically, I'll show some of them. Yes, this is Ann Coulter. A character was pitched to me as basically Ann Coulter with superpowers to play off another political character. But uh, this was done by Joe Marone. And yeah, as a result, I looked for a photo of her and I photoshopped the color of her shirt and put an insignia on it to kind of give an idea of what this character was going to look like. And then, right here, I, yeah, I took a photo of gymnast Nastia Lucan and photoshopped her in the color scheme of Demon Girl. Again, just because I wanted to have some sort of representation of these characters that were in my head that I did not feel comfortable enough to actually render myself. And right here, these are a lot of the sketches I was doing in the really early days of the project. Some of them are good, a lot of them are not. Some of them aren't mine, though. Uh, that's by... Uh, this right here is a version of a character by Rick. And, uh, see who else. This right here is a version of Demon Girl drawn by, uh, Jamie Faust, who did a lot of voices for me and was, when I actually had a bit more of an art team, she was actually a member of it. Uh, the biggest thing I kept from her design is. I don't know if you saw on the last version of it. The face kind of looked a little bit more like a stereotypical alien with horns. And she gave the insignia more of a playful jack-o'-lantern feel with a smile and teeth. And after she came up with that, I, I did a little bit of tweaking, but that's been the version of the insignia I've kept ever since. But, 
again, I really, there were just, I did what little I could to actually bring some of what I wanted to do to life so that I could just hopefully show it off to other people. Ah, yeah. This is what the Demon Girl insignia looked like before Jamie reworked it. But yeah. This whole section of my save, of my uh, flash drive, is kind of a testament to when I didn't have a lot of confidence in my art. And... What really turned it around was learning vector art, which I'm about to demonstrate. <sighs> if you saw the last tutorial, I'm basically just going to do what I did last time to set this up. I literally did nothing but import. I imported the bitmap from when I was working in MS Paint and then the the illustrator file of what I came up with originally. I'm going to intentionally leave that off till the end of this just to just so that it won't be overly influenced. It won't overly influence me and kind of muddy the waters at what you can actually do when you start from scratch. But like I said, I'm going to, there is nothing on layer one. It's completely blank. I'm going to duplicate it out into about eight layers to start. And then I'm going to click group with selection. And I'm going to move this to the top. I'm going to successfully move this to the top. I like to keep I usually like to keep layer one out separate just in case I need to work something out outside of the framework of the of the model itself. Like if I want to work on a pattern or a prop or just really anything. I like having the option of doing that outside of the model. And I'll just name the model now. Uh, the character's name is Mechanic. I'd have to get my Celtics file out to remember her uh, civilian name. The main thing you need to know about her is that she is from India and she's Muslim. That will really only factor into what her race looks like once I unmask her, which, yes, I'm going to build a new head from her from scratch with this right here as my only starting point. But, yeah, <laughs> I probably should just get started. Uh, as usual, I think I said last time I always start with either the head or the torso. In this case, I'm going to start with the head just because uh, the torso is a little messier than usual and the head's about as simple as it gets. And it helps to start with a circle. Which I'm suddenly remembering that the last thing I did was involve making a transparent circle or making something transparent so let's turn the opac opacity all the way back up in a way that actually works okay and i was going with about three shades of two or three shades of gray on this to represent more metallic looks. So I'm going to go with a sort of a medium, well, a sort of a medium gray for her, uh, for her mask and her biceps. 
Yep. I just drew a circle. And the next thing I'm going to do, that doesn't work, but uh, I'm going to go a little paler with the yellow just to sell the fact that it's supposed to be sort of glowing. And I'm going to make a triangle. I'm going to turn my head transparent. And for the most part, I'm going to try to match this to the eyes I drew in MS Paint. Probably going to adjust them later, but to try to do that now would undercut what I'm actually trying to do. So here we go. And we're off to a roaring start, aren't we? <sighs> well, like I said, the torso is supposed to be substantially busier. And, but I have to start it at some point. So I'm just going to name this layer Torso. I'm going with the core level of the torso being the same color as the thighs, the biceps, and the head. Yes, that's actually what this is all supposed to represent. Helps to go back to a circle. Or oval, ellipse, whatever you want to call it. Mm, it's basically about the proportions I want. Let's see. In this case, the abdominal area is supposed to have an extra layer of armor. So that's what this is. I'm just going to stick to the basic shapes. I'm, as I go along, I might wind up changing my mind a lot. So I don't want to be stuck with anything right off the bat. But I'm going to go with a yellow coloring for this shade of armor because I kind of went with the idea of yellow and gold for this. Or silver and gold for this. In fact, there's actually uh, a photo reference I kept for this. The design for her costume was inspired largely by Cyborg from Smallville, which is referenced right here. Because this character is, in fact, supposed to be a cyborg, but everything that's cybernetic about her is internal. And just to acknowledge what's going on internally with her, she externally wears something that's reminiscent of a robot, but is still just kind of clearly spandex. Yeah, those are probably larger than I actually want the breasts to be. But they're start, and they're going to get reshaped later anyway. Since it's supposed to be a fairly simple uh, design for the costume, and it's all supposed to be super streamlined, I'm just going to... A lot of the time I like to make the pelvis a separate piece. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to lower the pelvis to back, however. And I am going to adjust the coloring so that it is darker. And I also just had this idea for these 
yellow discs on her hips. Since Moho has some really good shear and perspective tools, I'm just going to put them... <coughs> they might actually wind up becoming their own layer at some point, but I'm just going to leave them as actual ovals and adjust them later. And as you may notice, we're approximately halfway through the process. Mm. Okay, we've got the torso set up. Let's do the neck. I'm going to go with the triangle for the neck. Make that triangle a trapezoid. And the neck is supposed... I guess my logic with this is that this costume is in layers, and different layers are different colors. So I keep going back and forth over whether this is actually supposed to be armored in any sense, or just pure spandex. But... I'm putting the neck right there, and we're going to name it Neck. Okay, let's put a few more layers in. And to finish off, I'm just going to do one arm and one leg. We're going to turn the torso off so that we have, we can see everything. But I'm going to put a bicep down, which in this case it's going to mean yeah, here I am being an idiot. Okay. I was going to start with the leg, which actually means I'd need to turn the torso off, but if I'm going with an arm, I'm probably best served leaving the torso on. But yeah, I'm going to go with... The shoulder piece is going to be gold. And the bicep is going to be of the light gray. And just to kind of imply that these things are shoulder pads, I am going to lower the actual bicep part to the back. And we're going to call this right arm. Which is always a little weird when you're doing this because you have to keep in mind, <laughs> it'll trip you up. This thing is facing you, so it's right and left or opposite from your right and left. So I, I've actually entirely messed I messed up the rights and lefts on entire models at times when I didn't keep them straight. So that's always something you need to watch out for. But well, I called it arm. I usually call it either arm or bicep. I guess I'm just going to go with arm for today. I'm going to copy this, paste it, flip it, position it. Though, actually, that's probably not as good of an idea as I thought. Uh, like I said, I was just going to do one arm, one leg. Um, yeah, if I make all of it just the basic shapes, then... I'm just going to have to start it from scratch, and I'm going to wind up copying the good one anyway, so. Let's just cut out a step and leave only the good one. I'm going to turn the right arm off. <sighs> I think I decided I wanted this to be a different shade of gold. I don't know that I'm going to abide by that, but I'm at the very least, well... At the very, very least, I'm going to try to keep it slightly darker. Or 
Or, why not, I'll just go with what I actually went with. You got the elbow, which I guess I my thoughts on this are supposed to be that the elbow is sort of an elbow pad. And uh, there's an underlayer of the of the forearm that's just basically fabric and then there's sort of an arm guard on top of it. And I'm going to lower the the fabric to back. I'm going to match the color on the arm guard to the elbow pad. And we have an arm. And now I'm going to finish finish out what I said I was going to. I'm going to turn the torso off and I'm going to do that leg. Well, it appears I left I put the left leg out in front of the right leg. So I'm just going to I'm going to do the left leg first. Since the right leg is a bit obscured, it's hard to see everything. I'm just going to stick with the one that's in full view. And turn the torso back on for a second. Get that nice light gray. And turn the torso back off. Well, I can leave it on, actually. <coughs> I think I'm going to turn my leg layer off for the visibility on my leg layer off for a second because that's one of the things I really love about working in layers. You can toggle your visibility to so that when you are actually tracing anything, you can <coughs> just see where your lines are and you don't get too confused by yourself. But yeah, this, uh, this area on the top of it, it's supposed to be the same as the abdomen guard. And now, and also apparently the knee pad. Let's see. Yeah, I'll stick with that for now. And then the last thing I need to do is this, well, not the last lot, well, I honestly don't know. <laughs> my, those feet definitely look bad. My feet are usually bad enough when I'm actually, <laughs> when I'm actually drawing them properly. <laughs> so, but I, I decided I wanted to do this challenge. I'm going to stick to it. I will actually trace out the feet as well, because for it to work, you you do need to have reference to the different boot elements. Like this is supposed to be uh, a light around the area of the ankle. This is supposed to be sort of a a guard that goes over the top of the foot, and then I don't remember what these other two things were. It's been a while since I made this thing. Uh, for starters, I'm just going to do a triangle. Uh, might be smart to make it a trapezoid. Just I work with triangles a lot. It just the fact that they're slightly, they can be slightly asymmetric. Uh, it lends a lot. Like I, most of my shading I build out of triangles. And yeah, just for starters, we're gonna put that there. We're going to color it to match the knee pad and the everything else. And then we're lowering it to the back. All right. And we're going to turn this off. 
and I'm going to make this I'm going to do a circle to make this little light right here and yeah let's give it and realistically I'll only need about one actual foot piece so ooh I colored that incorrectly so yes which means I also colored this incorrectly and now it's correct isn't it just wonderful but yeah let's see I'm gonna give it kind of this shape to start I'm going to lower it to the back and turning the reference off this is what we're starting our character design with <laughs> okay well honestly at this point the the bitmap served its purpose I don't even really need it on anymore What I'm going to do with this now is I'm just going to start with the most difficult part, the torso. Basically, I usually like to have s sort of an hourglass shape to it, since most of, most of the characters are female, That's it tends to be considered the most desirable hips to race hips to waist ratio and also when it comes time to to rig it you actually have right here just you have these points right here which mean that you can bend at the waist easier and my general approach with everything I do in dynamic debutantes is I'm always really trying to just sell sell the agility, sell the speed, sell the action. So I like being able to keep the keep the models as flexible as possible. And gonna I'm actually thinking that segment should be should be in the back. And then, let's see, go right about here, go dip down. This shape right here is kind of roughly following where the collarbone would be, just to give the, the neck a little bit of room to breathe, not overlap it too much. Ugh. Let's see. What I'm wanting to do with the actual pelvis piece is I like the thought of it sort of creeping up into the upper torso. But of course I also want to leave some overlap so that the blank space behind it doesn't show. Let's see. And this is going to be about our hip region. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to set the pelvis up properly to where you actually have this is the actual area where the legs separate. I was motioning with my hands. I don't know why. But yeah. I kind of like the rounded look of the upper hips right here, but I probably should sharpen up some of these. And usually I like to sharpen the actual 
tip of the pelvis. A little bit more for my female characters, just for, well, obvious reasons. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, read an anatomy book. <laughs> and not even necessarily an artist anatomy book, just an anatomy book. <laughs> okay. And... I'm gonna put another point on the hips, just so that the, I have a little bit to, more to flare out with it. Overall, I'm pretty comfortable with how that looks. Now it's time to do the breasts. And well, as I stated when I was working on them, they were a little bit too large, so let's scale them down a little bit. And also... Well, this is weird because usually whenever I, I'm doing the breasts on a new model, I... <laughs> I wind up drawing these, but they don't make it. They just get merged into the rest of the torso. So you never actually see them. But the implication is this is a different layer of the costume, so... Huh. So... Give them more of an actual breast shape. I'm going to put an extra point right here. Just to... Show. Uh... I have another option I might use for this. I may wind up doing it before I... Ultimately... Finish the character design off. But... For now, I think I'm going to stick with this. Uh, I will bring up one thing that I did before on the model now to just point out I might be doing something with this later, but that's more of the detail phase. At this point, I'm just trying to build the shapes properly. So we're going to come back to that later. That We're going to, quote, put a pin in it and figure out how important it is later. Fortunately, the arm should actually be a lot simpler. Most of the time when I'm actually building an arm, I like to actually make the uh, the shoulder and the bicep one piece. It's just a personal preference. But in order to actually keep the shape of... <laughs> Yeah, in order to keep the shape of a sort of shoulder pad, I need to not do that. But I will be doing some other things with it. Just kind of round it out a little bit to where it actually fits more into being in line with the body. The big thing I'm trying to get across with this is... When you're working with vector graphics, it's best to not think of it like drawing in the traditional sense. It's a much more appropriate analogy would be thinking about sculpting or working with modeling clay. Because basically, I start with really simple geometric shapes and rebuild all of them. And, and just bend and twist them till they're what I want them to be. Now, all that being said, there is a way that actual drawing does factor in. Because th this is actually something that affected me when... Hmm. Well, now that I'm looking at it... <sighs> I'm thinking I might want to adjust the layers on this a little. The shoulder looks really nice right here. It would probably look better as part of the torso. <laughs> I 
I'm thinking I might want to put a couple more points on this and then actually have one of the points be super sharp. And the more I'm looking at this, the more I think I'm starting to see how the breasts would actually fit into this. Okay. I have auto weld on for this. And I'm going to... Ugh, that's that's awful. <laughs> what I'm gonna try to do now is, yeah. <sighs> the implication now is that this is a single piece. Which unfortunately means that at least a couple of the decisions that were made now need some minor adjustments. Ugh. And a lot of the time this is actually what happens when you're working with this. You'll just You'll start with something, you won't necessarily have an idea of what you're actually doing with it, but then as you go, it'll become really clear, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And why not? This, If this is supposed to be a special layer of plating, then may as well make it an actual shoulder pad. And I'm going to try something else now. I'm going to copy this, paste it, flip it, place it. <laughs> uh, probably going to adjust it a little bit more in a minute, but you might already be able to tell what I'm actually planning on doing with it. Oh. Oh, uh, God. Control Z. I do not like that one little bit. That I do like. That's my actual goal. That's that's what I wanted to do to begin with. And now it actually is what I was talking about. It is a single piece. I'm gonna adjust some of the angles. And yeah, I'm liking the way that looks. And since I did that now, it means I don't need the other breasts, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, gonna go out a little bit further with the shoulder pads. It's a little bit of a curve. And yes, I, I did grow up in the in the 90s when Rob Liefeld was at his most famous. Why do you ask? 
but as a result, now I can actually do something like what I was stating initially. I can actually make the... I can actually make the shoulder and the the bicep one piece with the actual shoulder. It's something I like to do for different reasons. Uh, the main one I'll show off in a second. Oh, gross. And we're gonna delete this. And in a minute, I'm gonna have to go through and see. Okay, yeah. Also, this right here has been something I've just started doing. It's... It allows you to work with just the actual stroke to put folds to put folds in for shading purposes and it's kind of nice it's kind of helpful I'm gonna make sure I can do this torso okay let's adjust that no that's that looks good the reason I did the shoulder like this is I like taking this portion of the uh, of the arm and when I go to bind it I either um, I either bind this point right here to the breasts or the torso so that when the arms stretch up it you actually it leaves some of the armpit in place and it keeps it a little bit more anatomically correct so to speak Ugh, now that I'm pulling out I'm Noticing more problems. Okay, so this, 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 this. Huh. Doesn't look too bad. I might still wind up adjusting it in a minute. Though now I'm suddenly realizing I didn't name the forearm layer. <laughs> okay. The forearm layer is not going to be too different from the, the bicep layer. I usually like to leave two points in the wrist and then be the rest of them are mainly just as needed for shaping. Mm. And then depending on how I want the glove design to go, I might put another point in the center to round it out, but I usually like to keep these two sharp. Just because it winds up factoring in when it comes time for point binding with the wrists, or with the hand. This arm guard doesn't look all that bad as is, so I'm just going to adjust it slightly to actually fit within the parameters of the the arm. I probably need to do something with it decoratively, but for the moment it seems to be doing its job. I'm going to put an extra point right here so that I don't normally set arms up like this, but I or elbows up like this, but since this is clearly designed to be a sort of an elbow pad, I like the thought of making it a little bulkier and tailoring it specifically to the area. And it does not look right next to the darker shin guard or arm guard, so I'm going to go with the original coloring of the 
of the plating. And at this point, now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to add my first piece of detail. As I stated earlier, I like to use triangles to do a lot of my shading. What I'm going to do here is round this out. I am going to change the color on this, yes. It's not going to be this crazy yellow thing in the middle of her arm, but... Uh, yeah, that's about the shape I want with it. Control C. I'm going to make the exterior the stroke the same color as the fill on the arm. C. much better. And then go with a slightly darker gray. And now the bicep actually has some shading to it. Starting to look a little bit more like more than just an oval. And hmm. I'm thinking I cut myself off earlier. Uh, I was stating about the main thing you'd actually need to know about drawing in order to work with vector art. It's more the theory than anything. It's, it's less the muscle memory of knowing how to properly or how to properly execute techniques. And yes, I forgot to name the leg layer as well. But yeah, it is less about that, and it's more about knowing what you do and why. Because if you know that, then you can execute it proper. The rules of execution are completely different with vector graph graphics, but a lot of the rules are the same. And if you know where you need to get to, you can find a completely new way to do it. So specifically, like, do you know, do you know how the body fits together? Do you know, like, what, <laughs> what your goals need to be with anything that you're doing? As long as you know that, that's more important than knowing how to get there traditionally. And specifically, most of the time, cartoon style drawing is specifically based around the idea of building from basic geometric shapes. So if you know the basic shapes to start with, and then you can just adjust as you go, and you know some of the more interesting ways to adjust them, that's actually worth more than knowing how to draw in a completely different format. But, yeah. Right here, one of the things I do is, since I do point mining, I, li I like to do a lot of intersecting to where their points on multiple layers are going to get assigned to the same bone. So that the so the movement will be smooth and you won't see something come out where it's not supposed to basically. And as a result, yeah. I'm thinking I might have overscaled the legs a little bit, but it was initially underscaled, so I'm This is a self-imposed challenge. <laughs> I've, I've got to work with the hand I dealt myself.
at this point, yeah, have allowing myself to get a generic out would be very helpful. But I said I wouldn't do it, so I won't. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, self-imposed challenges. Yeah, the implication I like of this shit, or of this thigh guard right here, is that... <sighs> yeah, it just covers, like, a certain part of the thigh, and it's not... An, I, don't, I have no idea where I was going with that, sorry. But, yeah... Nah, no, that, that looks stupid. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Well, I was tempted to give it a little bit of the curve of the leg, but I think what I was trying to say earlier is I like the thought that, like, certain parts of this costume are more rigid than others. Like, m in my mind, all the silver parts are, like, spandex or something similar, and all the gold parts are some kind of armor. So, the I, I was kind of debating back and forth whether I should intentionally leave, leave it closer to a basic geometric shape or actually try to match it to the curvature of the thigh and basic geometric shape one out but as a result of, ooh no 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 that that looks awful <laughs> okay mm. And I think I'm going to leave an extra point here just to. so that I can round the thigh out a little better and not be stuck with the single point. But yeah, it's actually got a nice, got a nice shape to it. And based on what I said a second ago, I'm also going to try to keep this knee pad area a little bit more rigid than normal <laughs> and you know what I never gave her an insignia I'm thinking it might be f <laughs> I'm thinking it might actually be kind of fun to do that now so I'm going to put something on the interior of the circle. I'm not going to be keeping it this color. I am actually going to take it and make it this color. And, okay, such silliness. Control C, Control V. See, you might already be guessing what I'm doing with this. I'm going to delete the lower line of both of these triangles. I'm going to try to auto weld them at, it at the best angle I can. M they might be going a little bit more round than I want them to, so I'm going to. Yeah, just keep it perfectly pointy. I'm going to copy that.
<laughs> cool. I think I like the way this looks. I might want to do a little bit of minor tweaking. Not much. Ooh, that looks cool. But also... <laughs> the character is a cyborg and an inventor, so I really want to focus on just the hardness of the angles. And also, since this is supposed to be part of the same piece as the knee pad, I'm going to go with this color scheme. Though, once I actually have it in place, I might do a little different. Yeah, just kind of blend it with the rest of the knee pad. And the idea I'm going to go with is... A very pale yellow. Kind of implying that it might be glowing. Oh my god, I'm halfway through the leg. Okay. Well, the foot is going to be the part I do last anyway, so I am just going to move all this foot stuff off to the side. Because it would really just confuse me at this point. Gonna. For the calf, I'm. Well, you always need to keep the calf smaller than the thigh. Which. Yeah, if you know anything about. About drawing or anatomy, you know that. But. Uh, I'm just stating it in case you don't. Because part of what made me want to do this self-imposed challenge was I've been on some of the moho groups and a lot of people talk about struggling with just drawing their own characters and I guess the biggest takeaway I have from all this is if you learn what you're supposed to do more than necessarily how you're supposed to do it you can do a lot because there are all kinds of ways to get to a destination. You don't have to follow... You don't have to follow the same one that everyone else does. You don't have to... You don't have to be focused on the way everyone else has done it in the past. Because it may not work for you. You just need to know where you actually need to get to. And then figure out how to get there. Yeah, I think I'll go a little wide right here with the, with the shin guard. And... An interesting thing I've always noticed with Moho as opposed to Illustrator is just how a lot of the time when you're moving from a single point, <laughs> it tends to feel like water flowing. Maybe it's just me, but yeah, it, it, it's something I, I've always thought really weird and cool. And it, it's always kind of interesting to me when it just feels like, yep, I let the floodgates open there. And again, I might be doing and then completely changing a lot of things with this because... Like I said, I'm intentionally going in without a game plan. Ooh, that that actually looks really cool. And proportion-wise, I think it looks okay. The legs might be a little bit longer than I wanted them to be, but uh, they seem to be serving their purpose. I'm just going to go... Uh, no. Control Z. Oh. 
<laughs> I'm gonna move the the gray part to the back just to make sure that I'm debating moving the the yellow foot guard up a little bit further, but for right now, it's basically good where it is. Did not mean to put that point there. As much as I hate to do this, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to... <laughs> okay, that's more or less the shape I actually wanted this to be. So... <laughs> This is going to be the one time I allow myself... Well, there's going to be exactly two times I allow myself to cheat on this. And I'm going to go into my parts file. Yep. Hands and feet tend to be the hardest things for most people to draw. And that was actually why I came up with the parts file to begin with. I just have all these different... Hands, feet, everything like that. <sighs> and the big goal of all this is, or the takeaway of all this is, yeah, some things are really hard to do. And maybe the best course of action for you is to do it right once. <laughs> And then just keep reusing it and reusing it and reusing it. There is no shame in cheating. There is, however, shame in not resizing properly. Okay. Yeah, this looks pretty bad. Uh, I'm thinking the, uh, the stroke is somewhere around the size of some states. Okay, let's see. And I'm just going to copy it to the settings of this. And honestly, the reason I kept this isn't necessarily that it's the best foot in the world. It's just feet are a hard thing to do. And if you get something that kind of works... You're best off just <laughs> you're best off just getting something that works well enough and then just reusing it and tweaking it as you go. Which is basically what I'm doing right here. I'm gonna connect it to the rest of the calf and I'm going to fill oh. <sighs> there's a little bit of an ankle on there um, let's see I'm gonna make sure the fill looks proper Okay. Yeah, and I think I'm just going to stick with that ankle there. Though, I guess I kind of want her feet to face forward a little bit more, so I'll, I'll twist it a little bit for that purpose. And then this serves the purpose of what this was supposed to, so... I'm going to lower the calf foot combination piece to the back. I am going to put this foot guard on top of it. Which mm, looks like it's surprisingly close to what I actually wanted it to be. Which, that's always nice. And 
Genau. Let's see. I probably should add some more points to this. It's basically where I want it to go, but it's also a little bit... It's just a little bit off. And I think I spotted something I need to check on. Yeah, sometimes when you um, build new things, you wind up leaving stuff behind. So, gonna get rid of that. Uh, hmm. And this, oh no, did not want to do that. I'm going to try to get it following the foot a little bit closer and more tightly. And then, like I, s like I just implied, this gave me sort of an idea. So I put a couple, I could have put, put a couple points in place so that it won't stretch too far, at least around there, because I'm I'm basically happy with this. Uh, tweak it a little bit, and then. Uh, Gonna lower that behind the shin guard. It's gonna take a couple tries. More than I thought. Draw. <laughs> okay, race to front. Okay, I'm going to move these two off to the side. I'm going to raise this to front. And then I'm going to raise this to front. I'm going to move this thing into place, and it's going to be beautiful and wonderful, and... Hmm. <sighs> Looks pretty decent, if I do say so myself. Going to... Copy the leg onto another layer. Going to flip it. And at this point, now we have two legs. I'm going to make some adjustments. Somewhat minor ones. Uh. And yeah. Also, yeah, now I'm suddenly remembering part of why I wanted to keep this like this. I I almost forgot about these things. That looks kind of like a Pringle. <laughs> that was the perspective tool. This is the shear tool. Uh, 
and yeah. I don't necessarily know what I thought these should be. Maybe, like, discs that she could use as weapons. Maybe just a light that signified, hey, this thing does this. <laughs> I'm gonna go a little sharper with the, uh, the point. The top and the bottom. And we're gonna flip this. We're gonna put it on the other hip. Uh, we don't need that anymore. <coughs> the initial version of this relied of this design relied heavily on gradients, and as much as I love gradients, I've kind of found out over time they don't work quite as well in Moho as I'd like, or do quite absolutely everything that I'd want them to do. Which some of the things I want them to do are pretty stupid but <laughs> yeah that puts me in the weird position of trying to figure out something I can do to dress up the armor plating <sighs> and just give it a give it a little bit more texture and make it look a little busier though I did just think of one thing to do with these discs And again, if I seem all over the place, it is by design. I'm trying to, I'm intentionally trying to just show every step of the process as it happens, starting from as little as possible. And yeah, now it actually looks like she kind of has lights on there, so they have kind of a cool look. And I'm suddenly realizing I completely ignored the neck. Uh, it's not that big of a problem, but... Well, you remember how at, toward the beginning of this I said I'd start with the hardest thing? Well, I'm saving the two easiest things for last. That being the neck and the, and the head. Hmm. Let's see. Mm. I'm going to make sure that I match this properly. I'm not sure I did. I did not. Okay, I, I matched to the stroke, not the, uh, the fill. So we're going to copy the fill color make that the stroke and another thing I tend to do is I go a lot smaller on the stroke with the actual shading bits I do and yeah th really all this is is it's just a little triangle that I put a few extra points in and now she has some something going on with her neck and here's the head I'm going fairly simple with it just One of the important roles of anatomy is that the the eyes occur at about the midway point of the head. And I'm st I started with triangles, but I don't necessarily want to keep them triangles. So I'm going to round out the back on both of them. I don't 
know how expressive I want to keep her in her mask, but I want to have the option to try something along those lines. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to hop, copy my shading color for this gray. And I'm going to make a triangle. That's all I'm going to do to start. Yeah, put this right about here. Gonna, um, I am gonna set the stroke way down. And at this point, I'm basically just kind of trying to set set up the brow line area. Don't know how actively I'm wanting to define all of it. And yeah, that was unintentional, but eh, I'll keep it. <sighs> this right here, mm, yeah. Doesn't look too bad. I'm thinking around the time I started this, I actually was thinking how it was set up and a way to make the mask a little bit more interesting would be put some of the to put some of this like armor plating stuff over her mouth and nose area. So we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna make these two a little bit more round. And then just adjust these points. Okay. I think a good idea might be to imply that this is maybe some kind of a gas mask or something. So, I'm going to go back to the triangles. Let's see. That is the opposite of what I wanted. Okay, that's much closer to what I wanted. Let's see. My goal for this is I'm wanting to do several of these on each side to give them, to give the appearance of, well, air holes. Control. I'm going to flip. So now that I'm looking at it, it might actually serve a better purpose as something else. I can, I can still do the air holes, but make them look a little bit different. Ooh, awkward. That looks a little bit too much like the light I was trying to get across, so I'm thinking maybe mm. Yeah, that orange right there works. 
gives a little bit of a three-dimensional feel. And thinking put two boxes. Well, really, I should only do one of them. I'm going to get one the way I want it, then copy it. And pretending otherwise is wasting time. Mm, let's see. Looks good. I'm thinking some. I might want to do something with that color along those li along the lines with the rest of the armor just to give it a little bit of just to give it a little bit of texture but I need to start with the basics first And this is why you name your layers. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Now I'm looking at her, she might be a little bit bulkier than I wanted her to be. But, uh... Again, these are things you can you can adjust once you have more of it done. And then that's going to be left arm. Another way you can do it is you know, just copy it. And then flip the whole layer. And actually, yeah, then of course rename it. And I'm going to choose both of these layers at the same time by uh, clicking Control and then selecting them. The more I look at it, I like the position of her arms over here. I'm going to stick with that. Mm. And her I kind of thought her torso looked a little bit too thin, so I'm going to stretch her torso out a bit. And I'm going to move the legs. Though now I'm starting to think I might have made her. I might have made her legs too long. Which, it can happen. And I completely forgot this thing. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to raise it. I'm going to raise it to front. And to keep its position, I'm going to rotate it a little bit, and uh, maybe shear it, and then 
Nah, rotating it and sharing it was really all I needed. And we're going to copy this onto the other leg. Okay. And since I stated before, I'm... There is one more case where I'm actually going to cheat. <sighs> that that cheat is going to happen now. I think I'm just going to give her a fist to start. Uh, I'm going to make lots of switch layers as I go. But at the moment, she basically just needs... She just needs something. So th so that the whole every I know where everything's gonna be positioned. And yes, it is gigantic. Yeah, and you know what? The more I'm looking at it... I think it looks better s on the upper layer. Ugh. And the downside was, when I set a lot of these up, they had extra layers to them that I need to get rid of each time. doesn't quite look the best, but it serves its purpose. And we now have... Okay, this is the right fist. And we now have the fully costumed version of her. I'm still kind of debating what I'm going to do with her as she's um, in relation to unmasking. That well, oh yeah, I, I forgot I did want to put a little bit more little bit more detail into certain aspects of her. So We're going to put a little bit more texture into the armor. Yep, me and my triangles. This might make sense in a minute. Might not. Just gonna warn ya. And... Gonna go nice and sharp with all these angles. And the last thing I'm going to do is...
Yeah. Let's see. And we're going to sharpen all these up. Trying to make it mostly symmetrical. And yeah, I think if it dips inward, it actually looks a little better. So we're going to do that. And yeah, we're shrinking this a lot. Did not want to move the torso itself. I did, however, want to move this. And yeah. I like the way it looks. Um, we're going to copy it, paste it. And I missed a point. Yeah, I kind of realized I might be getting a little quiet right now, so I probably should... <laughs> I should probably be talking a little bit more. <laughs> Basically, what I'm doing is I'm going to make this... This is supposed to be a sort of texture on our plating. Which... The original design, I, I just had straight up stripes, like you'd see on a character like Colossus. But, I th thought it'd be kind of interesting to just come up with a unique pattern like this, and try... And, and trying to incorporate it into the overall design of the... Of the suit and the armor, the armor plating specifically. And we're gonna... Yeah, we're gonna make it upside... We're gonna make it upside down as well, though. <laughs> I'm thinking I might have just made it harder for myself because now I've got to figure out what exactly I'm gonna fit in the center. Um, though, uh, while I was just adjusting this, it came to me, so... Uh, I'll be demonstrating what goes in the center in a, in a few seconds once I, once I finish adjusting these. Let's see. Trying to make sure I stay as well as close to symmetrical as possible. Because I don't. N 
I like the thought of it just being sort huh Okay, we're matching it. We're matching it. And... I guess this is one thing with um, costume design I always get focused on. I, To a degree, I kind of like the costumes to look a little busy. Just so that... It's one of the things you see a lot more in superhero movies than in comic books. Except possibly some George Perez stuff. Because he was always really good about making designs look just busy and interesting. But, <coughs> you want to ri run the line between it being simplistic, memorable, and striking, and and it just feeling like there's actually something to it, because you, you can very easily cross the line into it being so crazy and busy that it's not memorable at all. But also, if you don't put enough detail into it, it can you can have the same problem. It's it's just bland, and there's it'll feel like there's nothing to it. And I like that. Um, I'm thinking I might actually just stick with for the legs. I'm gonna stick with the original. Well, the original intent. I'm just going to put those little stripes on there. I'm going to go really thin with them. And... Uh, yeah. That looks cool. Uh, get it a lot smaller. V, 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 okay, I was actually trying to select all these at once, and I had my finger on the wrong button, control Z, control C, Control V flip. And this this gives it a little bit of texture and it makes it look like it's got some substance to it maybe it's a little maybe it is actually something that could take some real impact if she winds up in a fight and we're good and now I actually have the <laughs> the armored version more or less complete I might wind up doing some adjusting to uh, the calves and the forearms later but this is good enough to move on to the next thing I want to do so I'm just gonna copy the the whole group move it off to the side and this one I'm gonna name mechanic unmasked
and she's going to be a bit more complex than this. What I'm going to do, well, I have the masked version over here, so I don't actually need to do that. I was going to copy the head and then start doing it. Well, for the moment, I still do, so I'll just copy it. Uh, I'm mainly keeping the old head around just for reference, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be, in the second version of the head, I'm literally going to clear everything out. I'm just going to leave the empty shape of the head. And I'm going to go over to the swatches, and I'm going to switch from basic colors to skin. Um, she is supposed to be Indian, uh, as in from India, not Native American. So I am going to try to go somewhere in this range for her skin tone. I think that's a good start. And let's see. Control C. Control V. I might just leave this thing off to the side for the moment. It's it's basically going to be my template for head shading. With the stroke that matches the uh, fill of the head. I was going to make this the nose, but I'll probably just... Well, yeah, I, I'll, I'll still make it the nose. Who am I kidding? And let's see. Trying to put a lot of. This tends to be how I normally make a nose. Kind of trying to determine what I actually want it to look like. But. Let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty comfortable with this. Though. And as you may notice, I have no template for a head around. Or for an actual unmasked face around. So this is literally just me on the fly designing this head <laughs> from scratch, which I like. And gonna, yeah, that looks good. Only downside is I almost always design the, make the nose a little too big. The reason, and now you see the reason I kept the old head around just so that I have a reference for about where the nose is. And her nose is just about here. Looks right. And now I'm going to make her normal eyes. I'm going to go back to um, the basic colors palette and set up her eyes if you saw my other tutorial what I this is just a personal choice I make I like setting the basic look of the eyes up on the on the head layer it kind of gives me an initial feel for what the character is going to look like and 
I can start building from there. And yeah. Uh, another key thing, if you don't know that much about anatomy drawing, they always stress the idea that um, the head is supposed to be about approximately five eyes wide, the eyes are at the midpoint of the head, and the ear is usually around the same point between the eyes and the nose. I may wind up cheat. Uh, I was going to cheat the ear because I have some ears in my in my parts file, but since this is a self-imposed challenge, I will just make a new ear. I'm going to start off with just a circle. There are different types of ears, and you kind of need to have an idea of what type you want. I'm, what I'm going to say with her is I want ha her to have an attached ear lobe, which you can have either dangling or attached. So I'm going to... Though, yeah, right after I say that, then it looks... I make something that looks much better as uh, dangling. But you have the basic shape of the ear. Since I'm just going to be attaching it to the head, I'm going to cut out that little segment of the stroke. And yeah, it's right about here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the the head shadow color and realistically this is all just from memory and from scratch where y you kinda tend after a while sometimes you kinda just tend to know how certain parts of the body look and function Basically, right here, I'm just, I don't know if it's going to be clear exactly what I'm doing until I move it into place, but yeah, that's good. <laughs> and then... The upper arch within the ear, I, I'm always comfortable with. I probably should get a little bit better at this part of the ear, but in general, it serves its purpose. There's a, there's a decent chance she's... Her hair's going to be covering this at all times anyway, so... And looking at it, it might be a little bit too big. So I'm just going to shrink it a little. And set it up right here. Okay. And if I want to put the second one in, just the way I have her head set up, I'll, I'll just copy the ear. I'm going to flip it. Put it parallel, and uh, maybe rotate it a bit, and then uh, normally I look at and I don't have to do this, but I'm going to lower it. <laughs> yeah. Also, man, this is point seven five. Yeah, that stroke just looks entirely too big. And you can get a little bit more complex with your ears, but also I'm thinking, yeah, I might want to Well, 
at this we're at that awkward point in uh face design where the whole thing kind of looks like an alien and do i i still yeah i still have a few layers And everything more or less matches up. And at this point I can I can discard the old head. And I can just start working from the new head. And yeah, I usually need about four layers. Well, May five or six to do a face properly. Um, so there's a certain number of pieces that you need to do each time, and right now. What I'm going to do first is the iris. Which now she just looks ridiculously surprised. But we're going to call that irises. Oh, and I just remembered I'm going to need going to need another layer cuz I I do have one other thing I want to give her as as I'm going. Let's see. I'm kind of debating... I do like the thought of her actually wearing makeup. So I'm... I'm going to go with uh, an actual makeup design for her. I'm going to set up her eyeshadow first, which I don't actually want it to be brown. I'm thinking something more in a warm purple. Yeah, that looks good. And then uh, set up her... I set up her eyelids, which... That's just how I do it. Mm. Let's see. And I'm gonna put a couple extra points in just to give her eye socket a little bit more like character and I like doing that because it differenti going slightly lighter with the eyelid than the eyeshadow eye socket area just because it it helps differentiate the two a little bit a little better I'm going to set the uh, okay, upper eyelid, lower eyelid. And control C, control B. And we're going to move this over to the other eye and adjust as necessary. And one of the reasons I tend to like to go with, I guess, slightly more bright or extreme colors in my designs is it just makes it more interesting, more colorful, especially in a world full of superheroes. Plus, there's actually supposed to be a plot point that <laughs> later on that I'll bring up that the girls actually license the colors of their costumes as lipstick and eyeshadow colors. So I, I put a lot of 
thought into like what color lipstick and eyeshadow the different characters have in and out of costume. It, it's just kind of a fun little detail. But I'm going to call this layer eyelids. Uh, later on, I'm going to copy this so that I can make, uh, make it into a switch layer so that she can blink and whatnot. But that's what we have for now. And I'm... Um, eh. Now I'm going to set up her mouth. Uh, I did this before. Um, just <laughs> Basically how I do it is I set up. I add four extra points to a circle. And I put the divot in. And then I just kind of decide... I try to make different decisions each time, but just so that people don't all look like they have the same lips. Like, this is why in my parts file. Yeah, I've got hands, I've got feet, I've got parts of suits, I've got masks, I've got street clothes, I've got circuits. And I've got generic bodies, but you don't see any eyes or any lips. Uh, I like doing each of them from scratch for each new model I make. Just so that I kind of keep them unique looking. And the attitude I'm taking with her is I'm liking the thought of keeping her lips a little puffy. So... The only real, like, sharp points I'm giving her are at the very corners of her lips. Then once I have both of them, just position them together. And I think I'm going to go with her, though that might be a little too dark. Mm. Yeah, I think I'll go. Okay, that's not too bad. So yeah, I always like to draw my mouth off to the side and then position it once I'm done. And I'm going to shrink it a little bit. Part of the reason is I almost always draw it way too big. <laughs> and then I just want to shrink it down later. Uh, this is actually going to become a switch layer later on, and, well, there is one other aspect to the switch layer that I'm, I can do right now. It's something I've start, I learned about in the Moho groups, where if you keep, if you set your switch layers to interpolate sub-layers, and you actually have all the same parts in all of your layer and all of your layers you can actually just smoothly transition from one design to another and let's see okay that's better uh. That is a gigantic stroke. Okay. And what I'm doing right here is <laughs> y you might be able to tell I'm setting it up with that's the back of the mouth, this is the teeth. Which are not going to stay pink, by the way. Just that was the last color I was working with, so. Just going to set this up. And now, yeah, that looks good. And we're going to 
copy this, or well, we're going to move this. We're going to shrink it substantially. Uh, shrink it a little more. <laughs> because the key thing about it is for this to work, it needs to be behind the lips. So. I mentioned how I was probably going to need multiple layers for uh, for face. Well, I'm going to show one of the reasons. Let's see. Going to make a square. And honestly, with this one, I'm... I don't know whether you'll be able to guess what I'm doing or not, but it, it's kind of fun just doing it and then seeing, and, and then just letting you see if you can figure out what, what I'm actually doing before I do it. Yeah, at this point, I think it's pretty obvious what I'm doing. Weirdly, I think I like it better that way, but let's see. setting her up with a pair of glasses. Uh, the whole idea is supposed to be that, I stated before, yeah, she's a cyborg, but she designed her own cyborg parts, so. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't make a version of her that had glasses. Even if she's supposed to have, like, superhuman vision, it just seems proper. For no reason other than, uh, yeah, it, it just works that way. But I'm going to turn off the fill and the stroke. And then uh, use the create object. And boom. We have a proper pair of glasses. Which might actually be not quite the proportions I want. And I'm going to create a little... Yeah, I'm going to create the area that goes, <laughs> I really wish I knew what this is called, but the area that goes over here.
and we're going to call this layer glasses. Uh, though at this point I'm suddenly realizing I left out an important layer, and that is her eyebrow layer. And again, you might notice, like, yeah, this is just something, like, I am just doing these eyebrows in a way to where it's almost, like, I almost don't even need to think about it. Just if you get to the point of where you know how certain things work, you'll, you will reach a point where you won't need you'll just be able to do stuff. You won't need to think about it as much, which is nice. Let's see. I am thinking I might have may arched them a little bit too much, but eh, nothing I can't fix. That looks nice. And we're setting her up with two uh two eyebrows. And now we're actually gonna color these. For the fill, I'm gonna go with black and I'm gonna go with kind of a dark brown as the stroke just because it gives it winds up giving her a little bit more character that way and we're calling this layer eyebrows of course gonna turn the glasses back on now And the last layer we have right here is going to be her hair. Though, now that I'm thinking about it, that is something else I probably should have addressed earlier. Um, one thing I always tend to do on characters, since a lot of the female characters, I like having, like, really wild hair that can, you know, blow and get whipped around and react to all the action that's going on. Uh, I like to put a little sort of hair cap on them so that if I move all of it around, you're never going to just see bare skull. So that's we're, so that's her little sort of uh, hair cap. And... kind of trying to, I guess what I'm thinking I want to do with her hair is I kind of want to do, I want to give it a lot of just body, make it look, just make it look real nice. I made her, er, the earlier version of her, I think I made a bit more, well, a bit more, I guess you could say, uh, I made her hair a bit more wild initially, but now that I'm thinking about it, um, I think going a little bit more basic with it might actually... It might actually work with this version. I might totally change my mind in like two minutes, but... It's at least... It's kind of at least something I want to try. Uh, I want to 
kind of frame her face a little bit. But yeah, the older version of her hair was a bit more playfully messy. Whereas, uh, I don't know. I don't quite know if it qualifies as more Bollywood looking, but it, it's at least a lot more proper in this version. I'm going to call this front hair. And then... That's the wrong function. Okay. And then I'm going to create another layer called back hair, which has, it's pretty much just what it sounds like. It's the hair that's either supposed to be at the front of her, in front of her head or behind her head. And yeah. I usually like to do something to differentiate it a little bit. So I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with this color. I might wind up making some tweaks to this over time, but I'm actually pretty happy with how this looks. And now I'm going to look at what I came up with a couple years ago. Okay. Yeah, the big problem with all these is they were gradients. <laughs> they were almost all gradients, so whenever you import a gradient from Illustrator into Moho, you lose all your... Uh... Ooh. That... I might actually wind up using that. 